Hey everyone, welcome back to the Winner's Circle. I'm Derek. And I'm Cody. And we're here, we're going to be discussing the first week of Big Brother Canada. Cody, welcome back, dude. We've had a little little break and yeah. ready to go. A little bit of a break, and, I, and I, I love everybody that stuck with us, and thank you so much. I saw the comments, because you guys were going to our previous videos commenting, which we really do appreciate. But before we get into it, guys, you know the drill. If you haven't subscribed to the channel already... Turn on those bell notifications after you subscribe. And if you guys are listening on audio, go in there and give us a five-star review and leave a comment. These are the little things that really, really help us. And you all have been so incredible. We are so grateful. We hit 20,000 subscribers last weekend. And Derek and I couldn't guys... be more grateful. We, we appreciate you so much. We're going to be doing a live where it's just us two, Q&A, um, and thankful. And we're going to be doing a giveaway for you. It is, we are so grateful. We couldn't be here without you. And you guys have made us grow exponentially. And we really do appreciate it. Dude, 20K. Never thought we'd get there. And now the next step, we already said, now we got to keep going. Gotta 50K, keep going. 100K, we got to keep yep. it going. But um, like Cody said, couldn't have said it better. We appreciate it. Um, so we're going to get right into it because, again, we know we're a little bit behind. We're going to put a disclaimer here. We're going to be covering uh, Herman's HOH, the veto, the eviction, and then that was that's where this episode will end. We're recording this on March 10th, so we're well past that. A lot is going on in the house right now. We know that. There's another eviction tonight. We're going to save that for a separate episode, and the reason we're doing that is some of you may want to go back and watch this. We're cataloging it, so if they go back to the Winner Circle BB10, they can see our Big Brother Can 10, I guess I should say. Mm -hmm. They will, uh, you know, be able to start from the beginning to see our first impressions, what we thought about the week, the dynamic, et cetera. So should we dive right into it? Let's get right into it. Okay. So we left last episode talking about Herman. Herman had won the HOH and we had given a couple predictions. And uh, I don't, we talked about it a little bit before we started recording, but I had said uh, Jessica and Martin, Martin or Marty were going to probably be the nominations. And it wasn't anything personal. It's just something, I don't know how to explain it exactly, but it's, if you're an athlete, you'll know what I'm talking about. It's like, sometimes people just have it. And sometimes they don't have it. And Big Brother, there's a certain characteristic that the best, the greats have that you can you can almost tell right away. They're just they're comfortable. They have this natural innate ability to just get along with everyone. Adaptability, right? And you know, some people go in there and they think because they know the game really well or they're a super fan that that's going to be able to carry over to the actual gameplay. And what people don't realize, and I didn't realize this by the way, is that the first couple of weeks is high school. It's a popularity contest and it's a first impression thing and people get close really quickly. And if you're not on the in, you're out. I mean, that was my, that's, that's kind of how I view it. You are 100% correct. I can't even add anything to it. It is almost like a popularity contest. And if you are not somebody that is doing your best to be on the ins without being too pushy, because that will also push people away the same way it does. It is the analogy of it being high school is so spot on. Like if you try too hard, people will push you away. If you don't try hard enough, people will forget about you. And then you just aren't in that close knit group of people. And we saw, and with this is this can bring us forward a little bit. We saw some people kind of migrating towards each other and then outcasting themselves from the group as a whole. And that's where we found this this first week leading into the nominations and the people that we saw nominated essentially. Right. So let's right. just and get are you right talking about, that. are you talking about Jessica Molina kind of, they, they kind of paired up together. They yeah. bonded over tattoos, but they kind of ostracized themselves. But to be fair to Molina, she said it right out. Like she did. That's not, that's not my style. And like, so I just, I have she's this an to say about that, right? She's an introvert. It's not her style. Do we not know the show? So like, and I'm not saying that in any disrespectful way towards her, but it's like you chose to go on a show where like being an introvert and having like a very difficult time. And if you're not willing to push through that, then what are you playing the show for? You become an easy, easy target to people that are actually playing the game. And it happens quickly in that first week. You know what I mean? So I almost was like, I was like, why is Melina like openly saying this? It's like, what did you come on the show for? This is a show where you have to, and, and I can connect with her. To a certain extent, I'm an introvert until I feel comfortable enough. And then I'm like the loudest person in the room. Right. And you saw a little bit of that. You had to kind of like big brother me a little bit. And like, and I don't mean the sense of the game. I mean, the sense of like the family, like, Hey, yeah. here's my little brother, like pull me along a little bit until I finally found my footing about five days in. And so it's really tough. And if you don't do your best or you don't find somebody that 
counters that, like you did for me. Like Melina migrated towards Jess because they both had that similar personality. And then I feel like they both kind of ostracize themselves. Yeah. And I will say, because I know there's going to be you that are out there and you're like, oh, yeah, but what about this? Listen, we understand the game. There are situations where someone who's an introvert who goes into the house and doesn't really establish strong connections initially kind of gets through the cracks where like the bigger players go after each other. And that allows that person to integrate themselves and become someone substantial. I would go back to Ian Terry yeah. on season 14 where he didn't go in there. wasn't the life of the party. He was, he was definitely overshadowed by a lot of the big personalities on 14. But, but I don't want to interrupt you, but go, if it me. wasn't for Boogie realizing that Ian was an introvert, they wanted him out in the second week or the first week. You're right. You're and right. So he had a high level player being like, I see that they're going to go after this guy because he is the introvert and he's kind of awkward doing, he was like kicking himself in the head. Um, and there were things that were making people be like, I don't know, we should go after him. And if it wasn't for Boogie being the class player that he is, he kind of saw that and was like, he could have went, I'm home. protecting you this week. So now you ain't going after Frank. And I can't remember who the third person was on his team. So I will say that about, about that point. But that's the, and that's a great point because that's exactly what it is, right? Like it's such a, it's a coin flip. If you go in there and you're not being the aggressor, you're not making those conversations happen. You're basically coughing it up to fate and hoping that someone else becomes a bigger target than you. Totally. Because Ian Terry, who's a great player, great. as you just said, great player. He's a, he's a winner. He could have easily went home second. Yes. Just by a, a, a minor difference. So when you go in there and you are someone who keeps yourself, you're reserved, you run the risk of being one of the first targeted because it's easy. And I believe it was Moose. Moose said right out to Herman upstairs, like, you want to go after people who don't have strong connections, who nobody's going to be mad about if they go home. And that's not like deep Big Brother strategy thinking. Mm -hmm. That's just kind of the way Big Brother works. Yeah. So- you know, going into it, Herman, what do you think about Herman? Because he had a lot of conversations. As everyone knows, he is my pick to win this year. Mm -hmm. Now that you've gotten to see a little bit of him in his element, what mm -hmm. were your thoughts on Herman as a, not only the HOH, but as a player in general going forward in this game? Yeah. Really quickly, I want to put a disclaimer out there about, because I said Ian was a, a lot of disclaimers awkward. here, right? Well, I just want to say, because I was like, Ian's a little bit awkward and like, we know what is Ian's background and now, and I don't want anybody to take that the wrong way. We're talking about oh, like, yeah, no. stuff in the game. and But I know there's people out there that are going to jump all over that, but like, I love Ian. I have the utmost respect for him. And I'm talking about like, likewise, was, you know, we know the background behind Ian, so I don't want it to be taken that way in the slightest bit. And we're not even talking behavioral. We're yeah. talking social. Right? Yeah. Just the, like aspect the, of the decision game. to talk to people or not to talk to them. Nothing right. that anybody like Melina or Jessica mm -hmm. were doing directly themselves. They right. didn't do anything wrong. Yeah. They are who they are, but the decision to not be more open and mm -hmm. out there. Yes. That's what we're talking about. Yes. That social element. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, good disclaimer, but I think, I think for the most part, uh, yeah. people are going to get but what I we're just, saying. Yeah. All right. I just want to make sure. So again, your question nah, about we're, Herman. We're good. We love Ian. He's yeah, a great we, player. I, dude, I love Ian. So great player. Herman, your question was like, what did you, you know, uh, you know this game, yeah, right. And now you've seen Herman in the HOH role, which obviously is important. Mm -hmm. But just his interactions with people—we're talking about being introverts. He is definitely not an introvert. No. And what did you think about his ability ability to communicate with different people, to make moves, to not make enemies? What are your thoughts on him after the first week? I loved Herman and how he was handling. Let me have conversations with everybody. It was the same way that I handled that first HOH. It was. Who, what are you thinking? Like, this is so difficult. Almost like I can't believe I have this burden and I'm extending an olive branch out for help amongst my house guests. And I thought that's how we treated it. And I'm not saying anything I didn't see much on the live feed, but every conversation I saw, he was almost like having it exactly the same with each person. What do you think I should do? Do you, do you have anybody in mind? Like, I just want to, I just want to befriend you and help. And if I don't like how this conversation goes, maybe you're giving me an opportunity to put you on the block. I thought he handled it very, very well. Um, and, and, you know, you're always going to, you're always going to piss someone off, right? In that first week, you want to try to minimize how many people in the house you piss off. And I thought he did a very good job with his nominations. Yeah. He, he, yeah. And he went in and we'll get to the nomination in a second. I thought he's a great speaker. Mm -hmm. The sales skills are mm -hmm. definitely paying off. We saw a segment on the show where him, jo him Josh Moose were getting kind of close. So he's building that bond. There's some other stuff that's happening on the feeds. We won't spoil it now. Yeah. 
but he's 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 made, he's moving and jiving. He's doing his yeah, thing. He's doing well. He's got he's got his he's starting to extend his olive branches to everybody in multiple ways. Yeah. And you know, <laughs> we'll we'll see Ayo, we'll see how it goes. But um before we get into the noms, because this is important, on the other end of that, we saw a conversation between him and Jessica. Mm-hmm. And we did also see a conversation with him, uh, him and Melina. And I wanted your opinion on this. I was thinking about it as I was seeing it because I don't know if there's a right answer, but you go up in the HOH room, mm-hmm. okay, this first week. You're not the HOH. Yeah. And the HOH says to you, who sh- any ideas who I should put up? Now, you know, as a former player, if you don't say names, like you said, you could be put up. Right. But if you do say names, they could use it against you. Like, you're right. not stupid not enough to not know that. Right. What is the right play in there for future house guests? Like, how do you navigate that situation where you give them enough, but you don't give them something that can be used against you? Yeah. For me, it's like you say a lot without saying anything. You say, there's a couple people that it's I'm close with. You, 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 There's a couple people that I feel really good with. Like, I feel super comfortable in, in a big group. Like, I'm having a hard time. Like, I feel really – like, you almost like say – and counter it with how tough it is for them to be the first HOH, how tough it is for you being down in the pool because you're not safe. And you extend the olive branch to listen, like, I will do anything you want this week. This is your week. I know it's very difficult, but you're the HOH. And what all I can say to you is if you protect me, I will vote however you want to vote. And I will, if I, if I win the veto, I will take someone off. If you feel I need to, I will keep it the same. If you feel I need to, and I will just be your biggest teammate and your biggest ally in this first week, which is a very difficult week. That's how I would handle. I would never name names unless there's somebody that walked in and was like, I don't like you. And it's like, then it's obvious. I'd be like, all right, like that person bothers me. You can't name the names, man. You can't name any names, but you can't like go the route of like Melina, which she was like, almost like, well, why are you, what do you mean? Like she was defensive. And it's and like even just to just like I'm not going to do that. This is your age. And then she like went about lions and almost like threw a jab. She's like lions sleep 20 hours a day. And like your personality in order to have what you have, you should like settle down and relax. And he was like, well, did you just give me game what? advice already? <laughs> like you just want to, you don't want to say anything that hurts you. You don't want to give up any names. And you want that HOH to feel like I know this person is going to work with me moving forward and probably protect me next week. Because that's yeah. all the HOH is about. That's how yeah. I handle it. And, what about and, you? No, I think I think you're right. I know with me, it's kind of the same thing where I would really emphasize. So you come to me, your HOH, you say, who would you put up? I'll say, I'll tell you right now, Cody. The only person I feel really close with in here is you. I want to work with you going forward. So whatever you want to do, I got your back. Because I really don't care about the other people in here. I want us to get to the end. So whoever else goes up, as long as it's not me, that's all. that's how I'm riding. And now I just for, I, I I combated a negative with a positive. For like, for everybody that's watching right now, I want you to rewind the video <laughs> to when he started. And I want you to like z- zoom in where you cut me out of the video and look in his eyes as he said that and tell me that you didn't get a warm fuzzy feeling. Like I was I was just listening to you right now and I was like, I believe you. Wait, we're not playing the game right now. Okay, yeah, no, you're talking about Herman. Dude, but I mean, nailed it. And, and, nailed and maybe it. it is truthful. Maybe it isn't. But either way, you got to be convincing and make it like, listen, dude, at the end of the day, only two people can get to the final two. Everybody else in my mind's got to go. As long as it's not me and as long as it's not you, this is a win for us. Yep. Let's do it. And you just want to keep that, yourself off, right? You just want to keep it. yourself off the block. That's it. That's it. So, you know, some people did that better better than others. Yeah. As you, we alluded to, Jessica and Melina did not have the best weeks with that. They didn't show everyone. Um, but there was a few that really just didn't give him the answers he wanted to hear. And he goes into that a little bit later. But mm-hmm. before that, why don't we uh, – you want to read off the noms? I mean, yeah, he was so very quick with it. He, he, didn't, yeah. he didn't hold back. He didn't hold back. It was Jess and Melina. And he essentially said, we haven't talked enough. We really haven't talked enough, which, again, it dives back into what we were saying earlier. If you exclude yourself and you don't make it a point to like put yourself out there – and be a little bit vulnerable and maybe get outside of your comfort in that first week, you could very well be a target. And for no other reason than exactly what Herman said, we haven't talked much game. We haven't really talked much. So I don't really know where we stand. That's an easy reason for me to nominate you. And so it was um, Melina and Jessica. Melina and Jessica, and my takeaway, tell me if yours was different, was Melina was up because he needed to put a second person up, but he really wanted to target Jessica because he said right out, like, 
I just feel like you're a gamer. Like basically what he's saying is I don't I don't want you here because I feel like you're gonna come after me. And she So was. he he didn't even like sugarcoat it. He was like, Hey, we just didn't talk a lot, Melina. Jessica, I think you're a gamer and you know, I don't want you here yeah. anymore. Which you're a gamer. she was. Like she didn't go yeah. into that first thing and just sign a say the stuff that we just said. She went in and maybe slightly hinted at it and then like said, like, hey, you need to dial back your personality. Which for him it's like, wait, what? Like you're overthinking. Like you don't want to give up too much. You don't want to give up like critical information like that. Like that, that to me, what Jessica said would let, would let me know this girl's thinking outside of the box. She's thinking past the first week. Like she's giving me advice about how to dial back my personality to help me prolong this game. And if you don't trust that person when they're giving you advice, you're threatened by that person. And he didn't trust her. So he was threatened by her. And after the noms, she went to speak to him. Didn't love that. What did you think of that? that? But what did you think of how she confronted him? Well, you know, not to beat up on Jessica here, but that's not the way to go. Mm -mm. So when someone nominates you, you have two choices. You can make it very obvious how you feel because nobody feels good about going on the block. Or you could kill them with kindness so that if there's any thought in their mind about not wanting you to go home, you're reaffirming that thought, which it's Mm -hmm. like, hey, listen, you go in and go, listen, I'm going to be honest with you. You're right. I was definitely being gamey with you. And I probably deserve to be up here, but I want you to know the funny thing is like, I really like you and I want to work mm-hmm. with you. So I'm going to go out there. Obviously I'm going to try to win the veto. If I do, I'll take myself off. But if I don't just know, honestly, it's the first week you had, you didn't really have much to go off of. Nailed it. There's honestly no hard feelings. And if I stay, I'm not coming after you, by the way, I'm coming after you. You're done. You better hope I don't win this me. next situation. <laughs> I agree with you 100%. But, that, but I don't think questioning him and, and you know, and honestly combating him is yeah. the right move because it's just reaffirming that he made the right decision. Right. Exactly. And and that for any any future house guests that are watching this right now, that first week analysis, and even if you end up on the block, you still want to make the HOH feel like it's a very tough decision to send either of the two home. You do not want to paint that target on your back because then it also... What that shows to everybody else, because now Herman is the HOH, he's going to talk about that conversation to multiple people, and what multiple people are now going to feel is, wow, Jessica's really aggressive. If I put her up, she's going to like blow up on me. We should get her out of the house sooner rather than later. And that's what you're seeing with Jessica. You don't want to do that for uh, multiple reasons. Not, It's like, I don't want to go at this HOH because now I put the target on me, but I also don't want to make other people in the house feel uncomfortable around me. And I think Jess did that, and you see it as we get into the second week, how she actually feels it. She feels it. She feels like she's the outcast and like she's just going to be a recurring um, nominee. Which we had said kind of happens, right? When they kind of find someone, they become the automatic pawn. The only negative I'll say before we go on to the veto about Herman is I like his noms. Uh, You know, he went for people who didn't have strong alliances already, not big personalities, people that nobody's really going to miss. However, I probably wouldn't have chosen two females. I probably would have went with a male-female combination. Reason being, you don't want to galvanize a certain group in the house. And if they feel like they're being targeted, even if they weren't working together, they'll feel like they have to protect each other. You don't want to establish something where it's like, hey, I put up two females, I put up two women so that when a woman wins, she puts up two men. And then it becomes that type of situation. So if you really didn't care... No, if you really didn't care about that second nom, throw up a Kevin, throw yes. up a Martin. He did right? it you know anyway. What I mean? Yes, throw up a Kevin, throw up a Martin, and that way you're balancing it out and you're kind of setting the tone because that first HOH really does set the tone for the entire season. So that was the one thing I'll say. I agree. I agree with you 100. percent And that's something that people can really take away from watching this. And if you're a future player, that first week is so critical to so many different people's games. Whether you're the HOH or a person that's on the block or just somebody that. You feel good enough that you're getting through the week. You can't just take a back seat at all in this first week. The first week, and I would say even extending into the second week, the first and second week, but the first week being more critical are the most important to set you up for your long-term game. Right. They set up the whole house too. Like something even more trivial. The first HOH for our season 16 was Caleb and Frankie. Yep. And honestly, I truly believe in my heart. The reason that HOHs were so good for the entire house was because the first week Frankie and Caleb set the tone by being like, hey, open door policy, the bathroom's yours, shower's yours, you don't have to ask. I'm leaving the key on the door because I'm never locking it. And and the candy and food's all yours as well. And yep. then like because they did that, everyone who won HOH afterwards did the same exact thing because they didn't want to be the first person to be like, no, this is my HOH. Because yep. now it's like, 
well, that's weird. Yeah. So it sets the tone. Your style of HOH, that first one, kind of sets the tone for everybody going forward. And it can be really positive or it can be negative. So well, I'll not only does it set too. the tone for you, but it sets the tone for everybody. Yeah. And I will say in, in the all-star season, my HOH for the first one was that. It was exactly that. Open Gotta door. do it. All the women went up and showered because they got their privacy. Memphis won HOH week two. Nobody was allowed up there. And everybody yeah, was like, oh, Memphis is that guy. He's like, oh, we're, we got to walk on eggshells around him. And I was like, perfect. I was like, because I'm working with him. They'll target him probably before me because he's very athletic. He's very intelligent. But he also is like very closed off. And that and that's what happens because you mm -hmm. you put him in a bad position. Yeah. But it's obviously set you up. But you set like this precedent and he went back on it and it became a lot bigger than it should have been. Right. Because of how friendly you were. Right. But anyway, so we get into the veto. And worst nightmare, right? We don't have to go through it. You guys have probably seen I'll it. I'll say one thing I don't like about Big Brother Canada. The HOH doesn't compete in the veto. Yeah, see, you know, I, I got to tell you, with the veto, I personally think, like, everybody should play in every single veto. I mean, just like the HOH, unless you just won. I just think that it's like, you know, everybody should play in it. But I also will say that if you want to have some drama like this, the less people that play, the more likely it is that someone who got nominated can win. So I see both sides to it. Yeah. But no, I agree. I, I think that the HOA should always be able to play in the veto because they should have the ability to control their own destiny. Right. Like if they're going to do five, do HOH, two noms, and then two other people. Not right. no HOH, two noms, and then three random people. Because like even early on, you know, you want to be able to have that opportunity because most people early are like, I don't know. They're like, you know, we had Jay who didn't really want to win it. So Jay decides to throw it. And I don't know that anyone else was really that into it. Like Gino, I don't think really wanted to win it either, but he was trying. So it was like, it almost like lays it up for the nominees. I didn't like it, that, it, but it makes for good. Cause drama. yeah. Cause now they don't have to, cause you know, the HOH would have went out there and tried to win it. Yeah. And like you said, if you're not on the block, why get blood on your hands? Why right. make the HOH mad? Why make one of the nominees mad? So I, I completely yeah. agree with you. And, you know, spoiler alert here. Everybody knows at this point, Jessica does win the veto, which... She did really well. Yeah, she did really well. And, you know, I, a lot of it might have to do with the fact that Herman and certain people weren't weren't competing. So her, she had a good chance. She did what she had to do. Congrats to her. And not no shocker here, she ends up using the veto on herself. You know, and she kind of threw a shot back at her mom being like, hey, you know, clearly I was the target. So I'm going to use a veto on myself. And her mom makes the right move. He puts up a male house guest and he puts up someone who isn't necessarily the most popular person, Kevin. So what do you think about that move? Um, I liked it just because I wanted to see him on the block and I kind of wanted to see him unfold a little bit more uh, because he comes How do you in think he handled it? I thought he handled it great. I thought he handled it absolutely incredible. And I thought the way that he took the information from Melina and was like, thank you, I'm out. And went and told everything to Herman. I thought it was awesome. He handled it exactly the way. But I'll tell you what he didn't do well was, it was obvious what he was doing too. I think a lot of people. And I think now everybody knows who he is. And not to, you know, fast forward it too much, but even in his um, plea to his house guests to keep him, it was like, bro, you are not some, this unintelligent little like nervous guy. Like, you are methodical. You're very intelligent and you're not behind the scenes anymore because <laughs> it was, we, obvious. we know you, but also like, I didn't love how, how quickly and how much he spilled to Herman because it was like yeah. now to Herman, or if it was me, I'd be like, you're a rat. Like, I wouldn't be like, Ooh, thank you for this information. I'd be like, bro, Melina's going home anyways. Like I, that's why I put those two up as my originals and you now are just a rat. And so I hope you're my rat. Cause if you're not, you're someone else's and now I'm gonna have to target you. Yeah. Yeah. He um I don't I don't have a I don't have a read on him yet. Like I know the character he's trying to play, but I don't know if he's actually that person. I know. So it's I agree like, with you. It, it's evil players are really cool players when they're actually evil. Yeah. <laughs> or have an evil side to them. But I mean, even his photo, like I keep the if you guys see me, I always look off to my right or my yeah, left because I have the photos well. of the house guest. And like he's even like I know how he was why he was cast. I know the character he's playing. I mean I mean the, yeah, the I mean, I mean evil I, madman. That guy does not come off as evil to me or scary. So I mean, he's devious, maybe, but um, we'll have to. But see. I think notably we'll devious. Like I think everybody knows, like this guy's a little devious, and so like I don't really trust him fully. Yeah, he's he's gonna struggle. You can be as evil as you want. You can be as devious as you want. 
as you guys will see if you're watching the feeds, the house is kind of becoming groups, you know, yeah. cat- compartmentalized. And Kevin's going to be on the outside looking in. He may be someone who gets really far in the game because the bigger personalities end up going after each other. But I don't know how much of an impact he's going to have. I feel like he's going to be able to win some comps, though, some mental comps especially. Yeah, I think so. And here's the other thing. Like, if you're on the outside looking in, it's not always a bad thing. So for somebody that's watching this, if you're an, on the outside looking in, just don't make yourself an easy target on the outside. If you feel like, oh, man, I kind of feel like I'm in the outcast. I feel like there's groups forming. Just go and try to make yourself feel not like a threat to them. Just go up to them. Be very friendly and don't make it be like, oh, well, that group is forming. Let me try to like rally and go at them immediately. Try to slowly and methodically pick them off and like or try to just like make them implode on themselves. It doesn't always be – it's not always a bad thing if you're like on the outs of that big alliance because the big alliance will eventually implode. And they, most of the time they implode earlier than – final seven we only saw you know the cookout be the one that actually went six to six yeah so yeah no you're right and so we'll see we'll see how it plays out we get to eviction night Mm -hmm. again we're starting to catch up a little bit here they both give their speech we kind of talked about kevin already he gave a really good speech melina's wasn't terrible but it Mm -hmm. wasn't that good and i think at that point for the most part as long as Kevin didn't say anything unexpected, the the vote was always going to be Melina going home, and she did. She didn't go home unanimously. Stop me if I'm wrong. What Two. was it? It was uh, Jay and Jessica voted the other way. Jay and Jessica voted the other way, and so she goes home. She was, uh, I thought she was very uh, humble in her exit interview mm-hmm. with Arissa, where basically she said, "Listen, I don't know what I was thinking. I went in there and like, <laughs> which again, yeah, I don't know. You know, I was saying it earlier. It's like, what did you go? Self awareness, at least, yeah." And yeah. she knew it. She she knew she was in trouble. And um, I think if Jessica, again, that's it's all one little thing that can change the whole course of the game for you. And if Jessica doesn't win that veto, I think Jessica gets evicted. Uh, Melina stays. Yeah. But that's not the case. Um, Isn't it crazy how that can happen? Like, like Jess was in a win or go home situation and she won. And now what we're seeing is like, Jess makes it one more. She's, you know, mm-hmm. not to, not to get too far ahead, which you're going to see this episode in another two days anyway, but not, it's not in a bad spot right now. Could be, all you gotta do is you just need and, a week, and, bro. And we say that all the time on big brother, like people want to set themselves up for the future, which you have to do. Yeah. But the number one priority over anything else is to survive just one more week. Like you don't want to make a move where like we talked about Chris Kirkpatrick. Where he, you know, this is a perfect example where like he wanted to shake it up because he was seeing down the road how it could play out. So he like fired all his rockets in that one week and he yeah. ended up backdooring himself. All you got to do is survive because you never know what's going to happen the next week. And, you know, Jessica is an example of that. So we have her, we have Melina going home. Uh, we're not going to get into the HOH right now, right? We're not going to say who won HOH. We're no, not going to get into that. The There's already episode. a new HOH. There's already a new veto. There's already been some hookups. There's already some cup, you know, some things going on, some alliances forming. In case you didn't, uh, you if you're watching this on YouTube, there were some individuals who I didn't know from the episode. I don't know if I missed it, but they were going like this when they were voting out. I it's like, didn't I see realize, these. and that's what they they're because they have all this stuff. It's like backlogged a little bit for them. Right. We missed out on some stuff because I saw that, and that was that alliance, and that's why they were yeah. doing it. And so. do you, who is that exactly? It's Herman. I want to say it's Icy Veins is Herman, um, Tanisha, there was a couple others. Summer was in it. I don't know if Summer did it. I can't remember. You guys, Josh. It's tough. Yeah. Yeah. Comment down below. Kyle. Let us know what the alliances are. I'll be the first to admit I haven't been catching a ton of the feeds. We've been very busy. Six. There's definitely a few of them in it. There's seven. Yeah, it's a lot. It's, it's I know Moose is in it. I know Kyle's in it. I know Josh and Herman are in it. One, two, three, four. Then I Kyle. say Kyle. Yeah, Kyle. Who'd I say? I don't know if you said Kyle or not. You Herman, might. Herman, Josh, Kyle, Moose. I know those four are in it. Then I want to say maybe like Summer, Tanisha, and Betty. It I definitely saw Tanisha do it. Tanisha dropped yeah. the. She dropped that. She did it. Yeah. Um, but um, you know, again, I'm I'm pointing to my arm for those of you on audio. I, know, I thought it was pretty sweet. Out. I thought it was yeah, really it's pretty cool. good. It's pretty good. It's a little weird when you see it if you haven't watched the feeds and you're like, what are they doing? Like, yeah. Is that like, because a lot of times you'll have like a little signal to your family or friends mm-hmm. to let them know that you love them. But right. I saw a couple of them do it and I'm like, well, that's a coincidence. And I'm like, <laughs> no, it's not. It's it's an alliance. So right. um, good first week. I wanted to leave it on this note because as much as I love this season, I think the season's great. Cast is great. Um, 
what do you think about Big Brother Canada? You're after, you're done with your first week. I had kind of hyped it up a lot. You're not someone to just go with the flow and say like, yeah, you're right. What did you think? So I put out a tweet and in the tweet, it pretty much said that Big Brother Canada reminds me a lot of old school Big Brother where you put me on the block. I'm not afraid to come up and call you out and say, hey, to your face, I don't even care that I didn't win the veto yet. The veto's coming up. I'm coming after you, period. End of story. Like there's no hiding it when you're bothered by somebody. They call everything out and I love it. I love it. It's so entertaining. The live shows are so entertaining. I haven't been able to get into the live feeds because I've been, you know, bouncing around a ton in the last six days. Yeah. And so my ex is funny. It's like I was bouncing around so much. My credit card got locked. I was like, why is my credit card not allowed? I had to call. So they're like, what were you doing in New Jersey and in South Carolina and then Missouri? Like, what's going on here? But it's like, I'm doing big things. Okay. (laughs) Doing big things. Unlock (laughs) Unlock the card. I need it. Yeah. Um, but it, it's it's been really, really good. I cannot wait for it to get even more nitty gritty because even in this second week with the next HOH, we saw even more drama and I love it. I cannot wait to get into this. There's some week. shots being fired, man. Yeah. There's some shots being fired. There was something that I told you about. And I, want, I don't want to spoil anything because we're going to get into it, but yeah. calling people right out, like on the feeds. Right like, away. Literally, I saw some clips where they're like, I'm coming after you. Right so away. So it was really good. Well, one final thing. What'd you think of the house? House to USA house to Canada house. I like the USA house. You said you didn't love it. I don't love it. It's too much. It's like, I don't love the color schemes. It's like a lot. It's like this kind of like 3D retroactive in the future type style. And I don't love that. It's like, it's, that would be a lot for me. I mean, then again, the lights are enough in itself, but I like more of like the homie, like you're in the house and people are watching you. Not like you're on a spaceship in the future and like every other room is a different color. That's like blinding. I don't love I've the been house there. Right now. It, I've been there. I've been inside the house. It doesn't seem that comfortable. The thing I do like about it is there's so many like hidden little Easter yeah. eggs in there that can yeah. help your game. And I would be Constantly. climbing under yeah. doors and stuff trying because yeah. you you just hit one tile on the wall and all of a sudden there's a power of veto coming up through the floor. Yeah. Like it's like it's like that. So yeah, that's pretty cool. But any final thoughts? Nope. Uh, guys, the t-shirt link, if you guys want to get some Winter Circle merchandise, the link is down below. Check it out. We are obsessed with the shirts. Derek actually picked out the material, and I couldn't be happier. Fire. Because it is Fire. just the most comfortable shirt. It is my go-to. Like, all right, I'm going nowhere. I'm going to throw my shirt on. And even if I go out, I'm like, oh, I'm comfy. I don't feel like putting anything else on. Like, I'm running to the grocery store. I run my Winter Circle. We are seeing everybody that is posting it. I put it on my story. I retweet them. I see Derek retweeting them. So make sure you guys tag us if you get your Winter Circle merch merch because we really do appreciate all the support we get from you all i was at the gym the other night and i was actually wearing the uh the red one nice and this dude comes up to me he's like yo where'd where'd you get that shirt from and i was and i was just like oh it's my shirt and he's like what's it for he's like oh i thought it was just like a positivity shirt like the winner's circle like winning in life and i was like yeah that's kind of i was like i I actually love that dude he's like yeah because it didn't it doesn't really say like i'm a big brother fan it just says the winner's circle and we've talked about it before like you don't have to be a winner of a reality show to be in the winner circle. If you're crushing your job, crushing a family business life, business owner, yeah, um, um, mental health, business, mother, whatever it is, single mother, single father, yep. anything, great you family, can be a winner. Absolutely. You're a winner. You're doing your thing. You're out there. You're in the circle. You're crushing it. You're happy. You're positive, and you're winning at whatever is important to you. So, I love the movement, dude. And when he said that, I was like, you know what? Pass it along. Pass it on to a friend. It's I a love mentality. it. I love it. So, parking lot check ins. You know, we got to keep those up. I got to start getting on that trend. I actually, I, I'm going to spoil it. I screwed it up. I was going to do one like literally two days ago. I was at McDonald's with T and P <laughs> and I was going to have it on me and be like, yo, parking lot check in. And then I was going to turn and have like McDonald's and be like, just keeping me accountable. Thanks guys. <laughs> I should have did it. I, I didn't, but I should have did it. And right, I was dude. like, bro, next time you have the girls in the back seat, you have to do it. And I got, I got to post that. That's Those are my favorite. When people were doing, and that's why I was so mad that I like kind of got off of it because a lot of people started doing parking lot check-ins. I was getting to repost it's it. It's a thing. And it's I a love thing. it. Because everybody knows that feeling of like, I'm here and I know what's ahead of me is like going to be tough, but like I committed to being here. So I'm just going in. I'm just going to do it. When you started doing it, I was like, it's so true because like being at the house right now, I'm like, yo, I do not want to go to the gym. But the minute you hit the parking lot, I feel like you go into a mode yeah. where you're like, yo, I'm in the parking lot. I'm obviously going in. I feel yeah. like it is a check-in. Like if you can get to the parking lot, yeah, that's all it takes because the next that's is it. easy. Yep. You know? Bro, you're going to walk right in and do your thing. 
100%. No, it's a great thing. It's it's definitely a good niche. You got to keep it up. So, um, parking lot check ins, Big Brother Canada. We're gonna be recording what day? Tomorrow we're gonna record after yeah. eviction. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna maybe be watching tonight? eviction tonight. Maybe do a late night, but it's gonna be coming out over the weekend. Another episode is gonna be coming out because we're behind. We apologize. I apologize. It's really been on me. Uh, and uh, so we're gonna be know. getting the videos out and making sure that you guys stay in the loop by having those notifications on. He's, he's nailed it, guys. We appreciate you joining us here on the Winner Circle. We will see you in a couple days. Later. Later.